Thank you, Kobe. And gentlemen, when I look at that game, essentially what it comes down to or what it feels like is a simple outclass on the side of CLG over teammate. Across all lanes, we saw yeah. advantages taken pretty early on. And the thing is, um, <clears throat> I think Double Effect actually said it really well. It's kind of like a metaphor for the entire game. He talked about the bottom lane, and he's like, yeah, Callista and the Sivir, it's like an 80-20 lane. They're probably supposed to win it. He said, but they didn't play it very well. And you actually saw in team fights with like a 10,000 gold disparity. You're like, all right, but Sejuani ult hits, and the like Maokai goes for a ride and like locks up everyone in it with the W, and the ult's on, and like the Ziggs ult comes by, and like Nian's there for cleanup. But of course, they got too far behind, right? Like, they got outclassed individually. Really good plays being made by CLG. And, you know, composition wise, the lanes should have been good. Composition wise, the team fights should have been good. But you got to see kind of the impact of player skill. Yeah, and it's kind of an unfortunate theoretical matchup when you're taking CLG with Zion Spartan versus teammate with Cali Trolls, especially with the struggles that Cali Trolls has been having lately, where he will overcommit to things. He's having trouble finding the right spot on the map to be. Whereas, that is what CLG excels on, last split and this split. It's beating you to the punch rotation-wise, freezing the lanes in the right spot, and early on, by the time they swap back, it was 75 CS to 50 and a one kill advantage for Zion Spartan. And then he knew exactly what to do with that because time and time again, Cali Trolls was making the wrong decision and Zion Spartan was making the right one. And this is a very interesting point to explore, and Doublelift kind of hit on it in the interview there, that uh, he feels mid and top are more of the carry-centric roles now as opposed to uh, the ADC in this current meta. Well, Zion Spartan, we've already said it so far, the split, one of the best top laners in North America. That's mm -hmm. a huge boon to CLG and, uh, you know, how they might do this split. Yeah, I mean, I think as far as, you know, top and mid lane go, I, I still say that CLG have top three in both those roles as far as solo lanes go. I mean, Double FNAF from you, easily a top three bottom lane as well. I mean, there, there is a ton of just individual skill out here. As far as emphasis being on the top lane, um, <clears throat> I mean, I think we can still see successful AD carry focused teams. I mean, the funny thing is we're seeing marksmen show up in the mid lane anyway. So as far as like people who shoot arrows at you a whole bunch being successful, well, guess what? But both proves that AD carries are quite good. But yeah, as far as, as far as, you know, focusing hard on getting your solo lanes ahead, sure, that works fine. I, I mean, we, we used to see teams focus a lot on top lane, and it just wouldn't be very effective because their top lane is on an island. But it seems that teams are very focused on team fighting, much more than before, uh, compared to like six months ago or something. So that teleport to show up every five minutes is actually all you really need. So this, this Rumble, who just team fights every, every once in a while, is great to have all your gold on. Well, and I think that's the point, the idea yeah. that a... a a well-off top laner can influence the rest of the map with a teleport is finding itself more useful yeah. than yeah. just a straight up, you know, one or two kill advantage AD carry. Right. The team fights are, are farther apart, thus, you know, that if you only show up once in a while, you know, as a function of like relative to how often people fight, top laners are there more often. Yeah, exactly. It's necessarily about this specific game, but uh, one thing just with the holistic meta right now, with so many tanks being in the game, if we're thinking about Cinder Hulk junglers, Rek'Sai, and Gragas, uh, someone's got to kill them, right? <laughs> yep. And it's generally not the AD carry with when they're hitting their power spikes. So therefore, yeah. we're seeing more potency put onto those other solo laners because especially the mid lane yeah. right now with the Cassiopeia, the Azir, or even the Varus, just repetitive poke before they can get engaged on are the ones that are actually able to kill the Cinder Hulk tanks. And I think that's one of the big reasons we're seeing mid and top focus right now. All intents and purposes, great game for CLG. I do want to hit on teammate real quick one thing, which is that we are seeing Porpoise Pops get shut down a little bit. And it's something that in the spring split we really applauded him for was his ability to apply pressure around the map, him and then uh, Slushy performing as a solo laner. This is not happening for them anymore, and it seems to, uh, it's, it's appearing to be a big issue for them when it comes to powering up to get to those team fights that we know they do perform well in. Yep. I mean, this was the thing is, you know, teammate were. You know, almost a playoff team last split around. It was basically off of Slushy, hard carrying, and, and Porpoise having a string of very good games. Now, to be fair, teammates had a pretty hard schedule. Uh, to my recollection, it was TSM and CLG as uh, two of their opponents so they far. They played Impulse, Team Liquid, and now CLG. Yeah, okay, so they, they fought like three of the very best teams in the league, right? Like, CLG looked like the number one team in the league. Impulse, top four, last split around. Team Liquid also tied first place in the league. Like, these are very difficult opponents, and it's very easy to look out class. I don't think... You know, teammate are one of those top four teams, but if we see them against, you know, easier opponents, they might look a bit better. Uh, as far as though their performances, yeah, okay, Slushy's still doing fine. He looks about as good as ever. He traded with Poelta. That's pretty good, to be honest. Uh, and we're not seeing Porpoise a lot on these early aggressive champions. We got to see a Rek'Sai game, but he went back to Sejuani. And when you're against a really good team, against a slow early game jungler, 
you're not gonna have a lot of impact. And you know, CLG closed him out. So um, you know, if if teammates still wants to have a similar performance where they go sixth, seventh, which I think they can do, and that's kind of what they look like to me, uh, they need to start doing that kind of stuff against like the new Cloud Nine, maybe Gravity, maybe. Uh, enemy things like that all right well as their schedule gets a little easier we'll see if they can put some wins up on the board coming up after the break we'll see if team dignitas can take down team dragonites in our fifth game the north american lcs returns after this